Call of Duty World at War has the most atmospheric, simple, and best zombies experience. Yeah, I said it. World at War is the best exactly because it's brain dead simple like my videos. There's no big easter egg or complex interweaving maps, it's just simply a very atmospheric horde survival mode that anyone can pick up and play. Let's take a look at Nachte on Toten for a moment. I want you to really look at this map. It's creepy, isn't it? This is something World at War maps all have in common. The atmosphere was nailed perfectly in this game, and it's something I don't think most of the successors did quite as well. Compare all of this with 5 on BO1. Yes, the map is cool, minus that gun-stealing Dr. Brown son of a bitch, but the map isn't really unsettling, and the same goes for the other maps like Die Rise, <laughs> Garad, and the beloved Kino. The maps are broken down, yes, but they have way fewer ominous markings, the locations are more pronounced, and the zombies themselves seem to be a lot quieter. Now if we look at Verrucht in World at War, the tone is completely different. This map has a lot more than just cocaine zombies. It's a full-blown madhouse complete with ominous markings on the wall, it's a decrepit asylum, there's screaming in the distance, and it has the dentist's office. <laughs> The map's tone is set just by the environmental details in the background. Kino may be a decrepit theater, yes, but it lacks a lot of the smaller details that lead to something that's truly unsettling. As a whole, World of War atmospherically is the perfect Call of Duty game, no one's denying that. But there is something else this game does phenomenally well with its zombies. Simple. Fun. In Black Ops 3, the maps seem to have been made more so with the lore in mind over the gameplay, because just the process of pack-a-punching alone on Shadows of Evil takes a 6 minute YouTube video and a notebook to do. It's just needlessly complicated. <laughs> Similarly, the pack-a-punch process on Zetsubo is shorter to be sure, but it is still outrageously complex, requiring you to go on a literal collect-a-thon. I'm fairly certain that the only map in BO3 that doesn't require anything obnoxious is Der Eisendrache. But outside of that, I should probably note too, Black Ops 3 is not the only perpetrator of this. Transit and Mob of the Dead absolutely started this trend of overly complex pack-a-punches, and yes, I will without a doubt say Mob of the Dead's pack-a-punch process instantly makes it an overrated map. The worst part is, too, you're almost certainly gonna get lost if you don't know what you're doing. In World at War, this is more or less impossible. Every map is just a few rooms and they'll all link back together in damn near no time. The race is as complex as World at War zombies gets, and even then, the most complicated this map gets is you have to link the teleporters to the pad, a process the game literally tells you how to do. But even then, this is just one map. In the other three maps in this game, there are no ways to pack a punch at all. All you can do is buy guns from the wall or box and try to survive as best as you can. The game is genuinely hard, especially past round 10. In no time at all, the feeling of power you get with your PP is gonna diminish as you burn through your entire ammo supply in one wave. And you can't even pop some magic bubblegum to give you every perk. Not that that would matter anyways, because World at War only has four perks. These perks all fulfill a purpose to you. Obviously, you'll always want Jug and Speed Cola. Oh, and Quick Revive if you're playing with friends. So really, the only consideration you may have to do is whether or not you want double tap for slow firing weapons like the Browning. All of this culminates to World at War Zombies being a very accessible experience. The maps are all easy to learn, pick up, and play with no needless complexity, and I didn't even go over stupid gimmicks like 9-11 zombies or an American's idea of public transit. Welcome aboard. Please secure all personal belongings and take your seat. Safety. Now departing from the station. Only rent.
And I should mention as well, all of the DLC is free. You just have to buy the base game and every map is accessible to you. On the contrary, in Black Ops 1, 2, and 3, you still need to pay for every penny of what that DLC was worth. The absolute worst World at War gets is the fact that the zombies were dipped in a bucket of Elmer's glue. Oh, and before anyone cries nostalgia, this is the World at War I grew up playing.